now more than ever, innovative technologies are fueling change and sparking new ways of thinking. Collaboration between corporations and startups is key to staying at the forefront of these trends. However, finding the right startups can be expensive, time-consuming, and ineffective. But Plug and Play is here to help. As a corporate partner, you will gain access to a whole ecosystem of innovation. Discover startups that meet your tech interests. Stay updated on the latest trends and network with industry peers. We will help you during every stage of your innovation journey, no matter where you are and where you want to go. Get in touch today. All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to our Corporate Universe Pitch Session. I'm super excited to be here uh, to be hosting this event again. Uh, this time we have 12 of our corporate partners joining us and this is going to be a great opportunity uh, for you all to learn more about you know their technology interest areas and some of the projects they've been working on and more importantly this may be also a great opportunity for you guys to potentially collaborate together so i'm so excited and let's get started my name is juni i'm a partner success manager at plug and play smart cities and today is day one of our two-part series where we'll see some of our energy and mobility partners present. We'll have another session next week on October 6th uh, with uh, our IoT and real estate construction partners. So please mark your calendars. And today's schedule will follow this agenda. Uh, after I'm finished here, we'll jump right into the presentations from our corporate partners and then finish with a 40 minute networking session here on Remo. And uh, speaking on Remo, uh, I wanted to cover a few tips to help create the best Remo experience ever. Uh, you want to be joining from at either desktop or laptop computer using either Google Chrome or uh, the most updated browser. Uh, if you do run into any issues, plug and play will have a help, de help desk uh, on the left side of the screen uh, where you can chat with us uh, to help troubleshoot any issues. And quickly, this is uh, what you can expect to see. Let me quickly walk you through. So we have a table for each of our, our, our uh, corporate presenters, which you can find on the upper billboard uh, labeled uh, corporate table number. And you can join any of these tables by simply double clicking on that table. Uh, but if there are already six people, you will receive a message stating that the table is full. So uh, hop on over to another uh, table until space clears out. And um, in the upper right corner, you will see an icon where uh, you can update your profile. Please uh, make sure to add your uh, photo company logo and update your name, uh, add your LinkedIn and website URLs. Uh, this will make it a lot easier for you guys to connect and continue your discussions offline. Moving to the bottom uh, of the screen, you'll see uh, the controls to turn on and off your cameras, uh, your microphones as well. Uh, there's also a chat box where you can chat directly with one person or the entire table that you are at. Uh, we, we have also labeled uh, where you can find our plug and play help desk uh, in case you have any questions or would like to chat with a member of our team. And uh, last but not least, you can always check your mic and camera settings uh, by clicking the three little lines uh, in the upper left hand corner. Uh, was, uh, was a lot, but I don't want to take too much time here. So let's dive right into uh, corporate presentations. So first we have Contact Energy. Uh, Contact Energy is one of New Zealand's uh, largest energy generator and retailers, uh, focusing on producing renewable energy with maintaining uh, reliable access to energy for their 500,000 customers. So with that, Andy, please take it away. Hi everyone, it's Andy Sibley here from Contact Energy in New Zealand. We're an energy company that services around about 40% of the load in New Zealand from a commercial perspective and our residential customers. And we have a large renewable generation fleet and also a, a, a servicing and re retail arm. So we've got a product broad portfolio. And one of the things we've been really moving forward is creating a movement called Change Matters, which is helping our customers move to a low carbon future and really connecting them to that renewable energy source. To do that, we've also re recruited the help of a, 
a small company that we bought called Simply Energy, which is a startup brand and how we're driving that whole energy perspective in New Zealand. We've been really creating this movement and really driving some of this forward and using plug and play as a way of connecting to new startups at an early stage and really bringing innovations and ideas down to New Zealand and take people on the journey. But here's a little bit about what Change Matters is and I'll come back to you shortly after that. Thank you. When it comes to matters of our rapidly changing climate, it's fair to say that at last there's enough people with enough foresight to understand there's a big problem on our immediate horizon. It's not the figment of myth or imagination, and it's not going away, not in our lifetime anyway. It's also fair to say that thankfully, there's a groundswell of support in the corporate world, backed up with a range of initiatives, commitments, and innovations that represent a promising start to reversing the damage done by the world's outdated technologies. But for all the promises and positive actions that are happening in the world today, there's still an enormous mountain to climb. What the world needs desperately is more people and especially more businesses stepping up to do their part. But where do we start? What can we do? Many simply don't know but are hungry to learn. That's where we come in. Because we've got just as much reason to make change happen. And changing the tide of climate change is really the only thing that matters. We have recruited an amazing team to help and affect positive change, not just in our own business, but in yours as well. We feel a responsibility to help lead others to a future where energy is clean and sustainable, because we wouldn't be putting our energy where it mattered if we stood by and let others do all the heavy lifting. So where will we put our energy? Where it matters, where it will get the best results, where it will create the biggest change, where it will benefit the most people, where it will benefit the planet. Because ultimately, that's all that's ever going to matter. I hope that was helpful. That sort of sets a scene around change matters and creating a movement and helping industry in New Zealand move to a lower carbon future. The emission profile in New Zealand, we have a very renewable grid, 85% renewable. So we want to bring more of the industry connected to the grid through electrification, etc. So a lot of our work uh, in the future is around helping customers electrify, um, looking at more renewable on-site generation, such as solar, wind, etc. And how do we do that? And some of the journey that customers need to go on is really become more efficient to start with. And we're also looking for technologies that are really focused on customer efficiency, in the way they operate, in the way they use energy, and any innovation around that will be very useful and we're always keen to hear from anyone. So that's some of the journey we've been on. One of the key technologies that we really did find in Plug and Play, which has been very useful and connected our commercial customers to a, a really a lower uh, energy future, was Sapien. And this is a little bit of update on how we sort of applied Sapien um, in the New Zealand context, but it just gives you enough flavor for how we've taken an innovation from plug and play from a startup and really sort of accelerated it within New Zealand. Thank you. They're the humblest of all devices in your office. And I bet you don't even give them a second thought. Look, we've got big plans for these little gadgets. You may think of plugs as nothing but mindless connectors to the grid. But Contact would like to introduce customers to some that are super smart, the Sapient system. By deploying hundreds of these smart outlets throughout a building, live power consumption data is collected from every plugged-in device. Armed with this information, which is displayed on a handy dashboard, the plugs begin to learn. And as they learn, they teach. This machine learning instructs which devices to switch off when they aren't needed, shaving peak demand and load shedding, identifying inefficiencies or dangerous faults, and appliances that aren't used can be repurposed. All of this could add up to some serious cost savings. The system can even point to a more efficient office layout, saving valuable square footage. Not to mention how this world-beating system reduces a company's carbon footprint as well which means even these little plugs are smart enough to know that change matters. I hope that's been helpful. It just sort of sets the context of what we've done 
with a startup idea um, and use that in the New Zealand context. And that's really gone very well for us in New Zealand and how we can grow together and create mutual benefit. So that's one of the sort of key examples that, that Contact and Simply have really shone a light on in, in engaging with startups early, getting the wonderful ideas, co-creating some, some growth together uh, and starting at an early stage so that we can sort of shape the future and see where the value is with our customer base. We have a large customer base for people to try new ideas with. So delighted to hear from you and always grateful to connect with new innovations uh, and ideas. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, enjoy the rest of the reverse pitch uh, and take care and good luck from New Zealand. Excellent. Thank you so much, Andy. Up next, we have Dominion Energy. Dominion Energy is one of the largest producers and transporters of energy in the U.S., energizing homes and businesses of nearly 7.5 million customers across 18 states. With that, Jason, the floor is yours. Hello, I'm Jason Bishop, Innovation Advisor at Dominion Energy, and today I'd like to share a little bit with you about how we innovate at Dominion. So first, a little bit about our company. We are a uh, electric and natural gas utility. We operate in six states, have annual revenues about 15 billion. We're a large company, 20,000 employees, and we've made a net zero pledge uh, to reach net zero by 2050. And at the bottom is a few of the activities that we, uh, we see as growth drivers for the company, offshore wind, solar, energy storage, extension of our nuclear plants, uh, transforming the natural, I mean, the electric grid, and uh, modernizing our, our gas distribution system. So we have three categories of in innovation strategies. The first one is grow the business and earnings. Obviously, our shareholders demand that of us. And we're looking for adjacent markets, something related to, to energy, but that has uh, an exponential potential. Uh, we're looking to improve our customer focus. We, we're a monopoly in many of our, our business lines, and uh, customer focus uh, hasn't been a strong suit, but we're looking to improve. Next, and most importantly, in my opinion, we're looking to grow the culture. And that's where we're looking to our employees to, uh, to innovate, to, to bring forth good ideas, uh, to look outside the company for innovation insights. And uh, we're, we're hoping to enable that by, by pitch, pitch competitions, sprints, etc. Next is to do what we've always done, but do it better, utilizing new technologies, using data, AR, VR, drones, etc. So there's four transformational drivers for the future of our company. This will be no surprise to anyone listening to this presentation. Obviously, the, the rise of distributed energy resources is, is a huge thing. Um, everything we do is related to sustainability, it seems, and decarbonizing the energy system. Um, and data can en enable that in many ways. It, it can also help you uh, connect with your customer. And lastly, we're looking to assist in the decarbonization of transportation. So the innovation structure at Dominion Energy, and you hate to place a structure around something like this, but it's, it's kind of necessary in a, in a company this big. So right in the middle there, you see the, uh, the core team. Those are the, the scouts. Those are the technology expert, experts. Those are people like myself and people like Giovanni who you might meet. Uh, next, we have uh, innovation guides, and they sit with the innovation team, and they're the principal liaison between us and innovation and the business units that they come from. And, and they, in turn, have a group of innovation accelerators inside the business unit. And those are folks that have a good reputation for, uh, for forward thinking, for innovative thought, and, and uh, a can-do attitude. And, and we look to the guides, and the guides look to the accelerators to, uh, to advance uh, pilot ideas for startups and things like that. So working with startups, these are a few points that we try to emphasize internally. First, set expectations. What can a startup relationship or a pilot with a, a new technology or idea, what can we get from that? Next, can it be deployed at our company? Some things we already, some things we do are so ingrained in, in our processes that you, you can't easily change it. Uh, next, who is an internal champion? This goes back to the prior slide. It's likely to be a guide or an accelerator. Uh, next, we constantly try to uh, recognize the contributions of folks that work with, with startups. 
Um, next is authorize. Us in innovation, we don't have a magic wand that we can just wave and, and have everything fall into place. We have to seek approval of stakeholders throughout the company. And next, we try to prioritize. What has the biggest potential for effect soonest? And we say often that success with startups is more internal than external. I believe that strongly. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Hope to work with you soon. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jason. And up next, we have Tucson Bobcat. Bobcat is a Tucson company leading the industry in the design, manufacturing, marketing, and distribution of compact equipment for construction. With that, Joel and Lincoln, please take it away. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to um, the Doosan Bobcat reverse pitch session here uh, in the mobility section. Um, glad to be able to talk with you today and um, be able to talk about what we're up to here at, uh, at Bobcat Company. I've got Lincoln Voss on with me. Uh, he's our innovation investment analyst. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, just a little bit about um, Doosan Bobcat and who may have heard our names, but we're, um, we're a worldwide leader in compact construction equipment. And uh, we've been an innovator for a long time. We invented this industry more than 60 years ago with the first skid steer loader. Um, and then uh, today we're uh, um, manufacturing a much larger lineup um, of compact equipment. And we're gonna continue to be the innovator and that's why we're here. That's why we're part of plug and play and uh, glad, glad to be a, a corporate member of the mobility section. Um, the products we produce, this is our lineup. It's more than just those little loaders you see, but uh, that is one of our main products. We also uh, make small excavators. Uh, we're also in the mower business and compact tractors, articulated loaders, and then you see all kinds of different variants of mini track loaders and tool cat uh, utility, utility work machines. So anything that's basically under 100 horsepower, we would say that's capable of doing work is really what the heart of our business line is. As far as the markets we serve, the market segments, we are a, um, a B2B um, per se company. Uh, we, uh, we, we don't really deal with um, consumers per se, but we're more about selling to businesses that are making a living or doing work with our products. And um, so that's uh, typically in construction, rental, utilities, agriculture, mining, um, landscaping, and again, you, I'm sure you've seen our products uh, maybe in your backyards or in a kind of construction site, and uh, that's what we do. We, um, we move material, we do work, uh, we have attachments that go in the front of these machines that really enable them to be able to, um, to, um, to, be able to do unique jobs uh, going forward. So that's who we are, and um, we're based uh, in the great state of North Dakota. Uh, Lincoln and I are coming to you today from Fargo, North Dakota. That's where our corporate headquarters is. And um, uh, several of our major plants are, are um, in North Dakota, and this is where we were founded more than 60 years ago, and that's why we're here. Okay, so let's get a little bit into what we're up to and what we're looking for um, uh, as far as our technology strategy. Me and my team, the innovation team here at Bobcat, what we do is, is um, we do a lot of piloting. And we love to do pilots with startups. Um, we've done, uh, I can't even count how many we've done over the last three years. But <clears throat> the, the reason why we do that is to make things believable. Uh, you know, as, as technology continues to develop and evolve, we're taking technologies from different industries and we like to apply that to our business. And then we do a pilot to make it believable. We really believe in this strongly that you have to be able to show customers and even internal constituents that these technologies can work, they can enable new features or new services. Now, as we go along that continuum, we have a pilot of a, a lot of believable things. Some of those we take to the next step, we say we make it functional, we make it something that actually can work in the field and work for contractors. And then we, um, we take this fur further along, uh, another step where we start to commercialize and internalize it. And finally, it's mainstream and we've implemented it. So it's a, it's a funnel. Uh, we have a funnel concept here. We have a volume of ideas in the beginning, obviously, and then we uh, work on those ideas as we go along, um, along this continuum. Okay, next slide. 
Um, so kind of the key development areas, and this is where this becomes real, so to speak, for where we are and what we're working on. Uh, there's three main pillars. It's all around awareness, connectivity, and performance. And when we say awareness, it's really enabling how to know and react precisely the location and operational characteristics of our equipment. And so we're using a lot of different technologies and that's object avoidance and cameras and grades and elevations. Uh, technologies um, just to be aware of the machine and its surroundings. Then there's connectivity, being able to perform, control, customize, optimize, and document the operation of the machine. This is where we're connected to it. Um, this is um, like we talk about digital keys, we talk about digital access, telematics. Telematics is standard on our equipment. We have over 100,000 connected assets in the field. Um, so we have a lot of big data that gets generated already off of that. And we're doing some things with some really cool technologies with displays um, to be able to connect as well to machines. And then performance. We're optimizing the operation of the machine or the operator. And I think it's really important we talk about both the machine and the operator. And that could be with remote control, which we just launched, features on demand. These are software features, and we just launched that here in North America as well. Uh, and you can see that uh, leads into autonomy, which I'm going to talk about a little bit. Now, underneath all this is what we call elect is electrification. And, and we're no different than the automotive industry. There's a lot of work being done around electrification that's taking place uh, in our industry as well. We're actively working on electrification um, as well. OK, next slide. So kind of this is the practical statement for what we do in our strategy and tech development. We got four main tenets. It's again, it's kind of the practical one, but um, we really talk about how do we make things simple and functional for the user? Remember, these are contractors. They're getting up every day and he or she is getting dirty and a piece of our equipment to get a job done. And that technology or that feature has to be simple and it has to work every single time in all these different conditions. And so we need to keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing is, is a lot of these technology advancements can be significant even with the operator in the cab. And we say that because there's been a lot of work around autonomy and obviously automotive does a lot of work in autonomy, but we really feel strongly that there's gonna be a lot of technology advances that help our customers while they're still an operator that might be um, seated inside the cab of our equipment or it can be outside, but we don't wanna lose sight of it. Third thing is, is how can we employ current technologies or technologies on current equipment? How do we make things retrofitable? And we have a couple examples um, that we've worked with that technology can be applied to a machine that we made all the way back to 2004. And so being able to take um, a piece of equipment in the field and advance that technology or advance that solution on that current equipment is important for our customers. And the final piece, you know, is it tech just for the sake of tech? Is it just really cool, um, which doesn't really um, help a customer or does it in fact solve a real customer's job site problems? And so we always have to keep that in mind that just because you can do something with technology doesn't mean it's gonna be a, a good solution potentially. Okay, next slide. So just a couple examples of some things we're working on here. Um, some what we think is some pretty cool stuff. This is a fully electric, uh, T70, a T76 is a model of a loader. It's a pretty big loader. It's a 10,000 pound loader that we manufacture. Typically this would have um, probably an 85 horsepower diesel engine in it. We've replaced that engine with a battery pack, but then all of the hydraulics that we would typically have on a machine, those have been replaced with ball screw actuators. So this machine is completely green and it is completely electric. And so the motion of the machine is controlled with a lot of precision um, controls on it. It provides instantaneous torque. It gives us different types of features. It's really a software platform that we've created here. And we're just starting to build a few of these, get them in into the field with some customers. Early reviews have been really positive. Um, there's just a lot of talk in the industry of being able to be totally green. Uh, to be able to have such a quiet platform. Again, these machines typically can be pretty noisy on a job site, and so all electric is very quiet. Um, and then there's all kinds of other considerations that come in, but that's one example of something we're working on. Um, next up, um, operation and autonomous roadmap. We've created a roadmap um, 
I, I wouldn't. It's, it's kind of similar to automotive. There's what we would call these six phases on here, and we're working on different pieces of technology, but these are really stepping stones to um, creating more advanced solutions. Again, the operator can be in the cab, and this might be sensor technologies. This might be different types of access that we can grant to the machine, and then those are building blocks, and then we keep building those building blocks on top, and and um, <clears throat> we have the potential to have an autonomous machine. And so in 2021, we are looking to commercialize what we would call semi-autonomous types of operations where the machine is going from point A to point B, doing simple tasks. Not every job is going to be autonomous tomorrow. I mean, construction's very unique. Every job site is very different. Um, and so it's going to be a while before we get there, but there are certain tasks and certain things that can be made autonomous or semi-autonomous, and those are the ones that we're working on and commercializing. Um, and uh, the last area of interest in here that we would have is obviously we, we make this equipment, um, we, and we've been doing it for a long time. We're really good at it, but we're certainly interested in manufacturing technology and three key areas that uh, we're working in that we would be uh, interested in some solutions in. One in particular is this whole aspect around detecting and preventing hydraulic leaks. Um, you know, a lot of our equipment today, uh, it um, has hydraulic oil in it to be able to move these cylinders. Now, all electric is a technology to remove that, but uh, that's not going to happen tomorrow to, you know, to swap out all hydraulics. So while we still have hydraulics on the machine, we'd be very interested in understanding and learning. Um, you know, what might be out there to detect and prevent these leaks in our manufacturing process or even while a customer has a machine. Second is just <clears throat> some automated visual inspection systems, machine vision, AI, those kinds of things. We've done some pilots in there, but we would be interested in doing that even further. Um, and then the third piece of this is some AR, augmented reality work instructions and commands. And these could be headsets or tablets that could be cellular based. We've done a little bit of work in this area, but again, this would be another area that we would be interested in, in taking a look at as well. OK, um, with that, I believe that comes to the end of our uh, our reverse pitch here. Uh, again, uh, really look forward to working with the startups and being able to get some um, some interest going and some different ideas that might address some of these needs that I've I've went over. So. Um, Thank you very much for your time and look forward to uh, to uh, chatting further with you. Thank you so much, guys. Up next, we have Energy Steiermark. Energy Steiermark engages in the electricity, natural gas and district heating businesses in Austria. With that, Thomas, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Thomas Wiedner, head of the Next Incubator, the innovation platform for digitalization sustainability of Energy Steiermark, one of Austrian biggest utilities and focused on electricity, gas, district heating and energy services. Energy Steiermark serves approximately 700,000 customers in Austria and abroad. Next Incubator started in 2017 and we are strictly focused on sustainability. It is mandatory for us that any project has a positive impact on reaching our ambitious climate goals. Therefore, we are oriented on defined SDGs to create a substantial impact on sustainability. We are a team of 10 people and our portfolio covers idea management, R&D, funding management, startup projects, and incubator calls for our group, but also for third clients and partners. Within the next incubator, we are interested in renewable energy, sustainability, digitalization and circular economy. At least it has to be a testable prototype in the areas of energy, heating, mobility, energy efficiency and energy services through the whole value chain. We want to create new business models for our group and our customers. 
We are piloting frequently between 10 to 20 pilots per year and looking forward to new solutions and services to achieve a path for a sustainable future. What makes the next incubator different to others? Yeah, that we don't have a general program. When we work together with startups, it always is an individual approach. Our projects and partners and you, you are all so different that it simply does not make sense putting them all together in the same program. So when we decide that we should work together, we make a project plan that works just for you. And if we need to find three words that describe us best, I would choose these. Sustainability, individuality and network. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Thomas. Up next, we have Impex. Impex is engaged in the energy supply business on a global scale. With that, Masatoshi, please take it away. Hello, everybody. We are Impex Corporations. My name is Masatoshi Nishi. I would like to explain about my company and our future directions. We are in upstream EMP business for more than decades. We are currently having about 70 projects in more than 20 countries across the world. Our headquarters is located in Tokyo, Japan. In this year, we set a new mission towards 2050 with five key targets. CO2 emission reduction from our upstream business, promoting hydrogen business, protecting forest, enhancing renewable energies, and carbon recycling. Of course, we have a strong alignment with SDG 17 goals. Our energy portfolio towards 2050 is like this. In blue side, we, put, we promote about CCUS and hydrogen more and more. On green side, we are developing geothermal, wind, and solar with hydrogen productions. So about the hydrogens, we are already developing the test production facility in Japan to produce hydrogen from our existing gas field. About renewables, we already have a fair amount of energy supply capabilities from geothermal, solar, and wind from both in Japan and overseas. For both hydrogen and renewables, we are seeking the idea for competitive advantage in the market. I'm currently in the new business development divisions. I'm seeking the seeds of new business. So creative, innovative ideas or new business models are welcome. We don't mind collaborating with any organization like a startup academia, or companies across the world. We like to expand our position from energy company to be a sustainable partner with societies. By the way, one of our key concerns now is carbon, as you can imagine. As I mentioned, we have so many things to do, and they are looking for the partners across the board. My last message is, let's solve the social issue and create a bright future together with us. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Masatoshi. Up next, we have ITT. ITT is a diversified leading manufacturer of highly engineered critical components and customized technology solutions for the energy, transportation, and the industrial markets. With that, please take it away. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Francesco Lucciola. I'm here to talk to you about ITT and ITT Ventures. So let me start to talk to you about our group. ITT is a company with more than 100 years of history. We were founded in 1920, and back then we were participating to the communication revolution as a producer of telephone equipment. 
the company is very different today. We evolved our portfolio. And uh, as, as you can see, we are a diversified industrial component manufacturer to manage more than 30 global brands and operates in many different you know, industries. Let me give you a little bit more information about our group and some facts. In 2020, ITT generated about 2.5 billion in revenue and had a margin of about 14%. But what I think is actually very important for me to share with you all today is that our company has a strong engineering background. As a matter of fact, more than 10% of our workforce are engineers. From a global perspective, we operate in more than 35 countries and have regional headquarters. One in the West Coast in Valencia, California, one in the East Coast in Seneca Falls, New York, as well as one in Italy in Barge, from where I'm talking to you all today, you know, uh, about ITT. And finally, one in Shanghai, China. So let me give you a little bit more information about our company and particularly the many different business that are part of our group. As you will see, you know, in, our, in, in ITT and in our group, you will find companies like Kony that manufacture shock absorber for the automotive and the rail industries, but also a company like Goulds that produce, you know, pumps for uh, chemical and processing plants, all the way to companies like Canon that make connectors uh, for the aerospace industry. So a very diversified, you know, set of companies leader in their brand, in their, in their businesses and in many different markets. Let me talk to you now more about you know, our product portfolio and also some of the key trends that we're actually looking and, and, and following as an organization. As I mentioned, our company is very diversified and so exposed to many different industry, we manufacture from brake pads you know, for a car all the way to shock absorber that go to a train or a buffer you know, that go into an industrial equipment. We also uh, manufacture connectors for a medical device or for an airplane. We do manufacture, you know, control devices that are used, you know, for fleet systems in an airplane, all the way to valves that you can find into a biopharma reactor that produces, you know, modern vaccines. All these industries and also, you know, our product portfolio is impacted at important trends and we embrace the change around digital, material and sustainability. And we are embracing this also with the ITT Ventures initiative. The initiative is actually identifying very specific investment cluster and investment areas. Those are fundamentally the industrial internal things and artificial intelligence, the advanced material, you know, the advanced manufacturing and robotics, as well as sustainability and electrification. This investment cluster are areas where we're really, really looking for startups and, and opportunities to co collaborate with technology companies. So now let me talk to you about our approach and the way we like to engage in our startups. It's very simple and it's built on three steps. We have a scouting uh, and idea generation step. This is why we're really participating and very happy to be part of the plug and play network. This, this engagement can evolve into a validation and proof of concept. And if the proof of concept is actually successful, you know, it, it lands into a real partnership or investment from ITT Ventures. So with this, uh, please uh, uh, be in contact with us if uh, you're interested to know more about ITT and thank you for listening. Excellent. Up next, we have Kyocera. Kyocera is a multinational electronics and ceramics manufacturer headquartered in Kyoto, Japan. With that, Muzib, please take it away. Hello. Nice to meet you. I am Muzib Khan. Today, I would like to introduce you to Kyocera. Let me ask, have you ever been to Japan? How about visiting Kyoto? This is a picture of Kyoto. On behalf of our team, we invite you to visit it. Kyoto is not only a nice city with a rich history, but it is also one of the most popular cities in Japan. There are countless shrines, temples, and historical sites that attract many tourists. Kyoto has another face. It is an incubation city that has given birth to many innovative companies. Thanks to its prominent universities and research institutes, Kyoto is also the birthplace of important technologies that have helped Japan succeed in industrial transformation. Kyocera is one such company. 
It was founded in 1959 as a manufacturer of fine ceramics. Please remember, the name Kyocera comes by combining Kyoto with ceramics and turn into Kyocera. Since then, we have evolved our materials, technologies, innovated various processing and production methods to grow our fine ceramic business and expanded into a wide range of fields, evolving our business globally from materials to components to devices and equipment and even services and network businesses. Currently, we are proud to say that we have total 308 global bases with 78,400 employees and our total global sales is approximately $15 billion. These are some of our fine ceramics related products. You can see they are being used in many fields. However, I will not be able to explain all the details today. Since its founding, Kyocera's track record in fine ceramic has been unmatched. We utilize our extensive resources in research, development, and production to select the optimal raw materials and manufacturing methods for each new application. Breakthroughs and improvement in a wide range of industries are facilitated by the unique qualities of Kyocera fine ceramic. Based on the technical know-how cultivated in our core material science and component technology, we expanded into a wide range of peripheral components, finished products, system development, and service provision. These are just a few examples of Kyocera products. From materials and components to upstream services, Kyocera products have become a part of many people's life. We have been a pioneer manufacturer in the energy field, including solar panel, solar uh, SOFC. In a later slide, I will talk about them in more details. Here is a Kyocera strength, the concept of open innovation. Based on our know-how on materials, we have developed unique components, unique finished products, and systems that leverages these features to offer the desired services. Each of these layers has its own unique wisdom and Kyocera innovation. With this innovation stack, we want to provide the society with new value that only Kyocera can offer. Kyocera innovation stack is not something that can be created by Kyocera alone. We believe that it requires cooperation of external partners and startups in all layers, including materials, components, finished products, systems, and services. We want to create a vibrant ecosystem for all to collaborate. We have been involved in the plug and play ecosystem for many years. We started our participation in US. Now we have expanded our collaboration in Tokyo, as well as Kyoto. We were also fortunate to win the Corporate Innovation Award in 2019. The following is an introduction to our main products in the energy field. All of these products have been developed by Kyocera's innovation stack to create value and open up new market. Let me explain. First, in the solar panel field, we started research and development in 1975. We have been a pioneer in the field of solar panels for home and commercial use and mega solar panels. We continue to bring innovations as for example, PVs, which are salt resistant and can float on the ocean. PVs that are flexible, thinner and lighter and so on. Our solid oxide fuel cell or SOFC research and development started in 1985 and mass production of cell stacks started in 2012. Using those cell stacks, a lot of other companies deployed it in the market. And then finally, in 2019, we have launched our world's first smallest any farm mini cogeneration product. In battery storage area, in 2020, we launched the world's first semi-solid state clay type lithium ion battery products. In terms of energy system, we have been working on virtual power plant, microgrid projects, and many others. For example, we are conducting various demonstration tests of local energy management, 
microgrids in Kagoshima Prefecture and elsewhere in Japan. Our aim is to demonstrate and deploy an efficient system of local production for local consumption. Well, I have mentioned the Kyocera innovation stack before. Let me give you an example, and this slide illustrates such a collaboration with the startup. The world's first semi-solid state household storage battery, which Kyocera launched last year, was developed in collaboration with 24M, a MIT startup. These batteries offer higher energy density to achieve bigger capacity in a smaller form factor. This is just one example of many other efforts. We are looking for collaborators we can, who can provide a win-win situation in all layers of the innovation stack, whether it is materials, components, equipment, systems and services, regardless of hardware, software, and deep technology. These are some of the keywords that we are currently concentrating our search on. Hydrogen in a broad base, direct air capture, carbon capture and storage using any other alternative technologies, new energy solutions and new monetization schemes and so on. We like to collaborate with startups and other companies that are discovering new technologies, new systems to implement a breakthrough solutions. We want to partner with all in a win-win basis and let's face decarbonization together. Here is our contact information. I am Uzeeb Khan and my colleague Hisaki Fujita-san is here to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening to us. Excellent. Thank you so much, Muzib. Up next, we have Manan Hamel. As a global leader and expert in the field of filtration, Manan Hamel develops innovative solutions for the health and mobility of people. With that, Mike, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Mike Adams, Director of Corporate Ventures at Mon & Hummel. Thanks for taking the time to come listen to our reverse pitch. Let me tell you a little bit about our company. At Mon & Hummel, we are all about leadership and filtration. We are a family-owned, German-headquartered company with over 80 locations worldwide. We have talented employees who have built respected brands in many industries. With all that talent and performance culture, we're able to produce over 26 filters per second worldwide. You can think of our core business in two big pieces, transportation, the two squares on the left, and life science environment, the two squares on the right. Let's dive into these segments so you get to know a little bit more about who Mon & Hummel is. On the transportation side, we make all manner of filters, separators, and other products for everything ranging from passenger cars to the most heavy duty vehicles. Our product portfolio has grown from over 60 years of experience in the field. Today, if filters move through a vehicle and cleanliness and efficiency is important, we likely make a product for it. Strategically, over the past 10 years, we have been taking our filtration and separation expertise into markets beyond transportation. We bundle these under title Life Science in the Environment. Taken in broad terms, this can be thought of as air and water. We have solutions for any number of markets ranging from operating theaters to office buildings, from desalination plants to dairy farms. We pride ourselves on having the high, perform high performing products in all of these categories. One of the keys for us maintaining that high performance is our efforts in digitalization. We believe that this is the next evolution in our business, replacing the, taking our customers from the rote and routine replacement cycles to smart utilization, better productivity, better protection and improved convenience, all through making our products more digital. We believe ultimately customers do not want to buy filters. What they want is clean air, clean water, and clean fluids. Digitalization is a bridge enabling Mon Humble to offer these as a service. And while we're working on it today, it does not happen overnight, which brings me to why I'm here. To achieve this goal, we know we will need innovation from outside Mon and Humble. We see corporate ventures as a key mechanism to drive this evolution. This will happen through strategic partnership and investment with venture stage companies. We want to deliver high value to our customers through the advent of new technology and smart applications of the evolving business models that emerge from the startup world. But Mike, you might be thinking, it's just a filter. What makes you think startups are relevant? 
let me show you how many strategic areas we think corporate ventures and startups like those at Plug and Play can impact. From our point of view, the opportunity set with startups is wide and deep. For example, the rapid changes going on in mobility force us to imagine new channels to our customers. Advances in materials can feed the performance of any of our core products. To achieve our digitalization vision, we must learn, we must have the best from the world of IoT and machine learning. And the new awareness around water and air quality, especially in the time of coronavirus, are challenges our customers face that create immense opportunities for us as a solution provider. All of these areas affect Mon and Hummel and our customers in potentially large ways. In a way, you can think of those areas in three larger categories, markets, technologies, and trends. The perfect fit for Mon and Hummel and a startup is when you can hit all three, the trifecta. Let me tell you about some examples. One of our internal ventures is Claire. They are providing intelligent air quality monitoring and solutions for commercial buildings. Claire is the analytics and intelligence wrapped around a state-of-the-art sensor technology. That sensor technology comes from one of our corporate venture portfolio companies. That kind of partnership where startup technology help us create new offerings and our work help creates growth for the startup is a great fit for Mon and Hummel. Another example is our investment in Second Nature, a subscription-based provider of residential air filters in the U.S. Second Nature represented the perfect combination of an e-commerce approach, new business model experimentation, and the targeting of a convenience-oriented consumer. This type of approach would have been a challenge for Mon and Hummel to try on its own. Now we are partnered with an emerging leader in this space, lending our expertise and product offerings to this new portfolio company. If you're interested in helping this 60-year-old company of filter experts transform itself into a more diverse, more digital, and more sustainable company, I encourage you to reach out to me and let's explore ways that we can work together. Here's my contact information. I'm Mike Adams with Mon and Hummel. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Mike. Up next, we have Mitsubishi Electric. Mitsubishi Electric is a Japanese multinational electronics and electrical equipment manufacturing company headquartered in Tokyo, Japan. With that, Naoki, please take it away. Hello, my name is Naoki Shimizu from Mitsubishi Electric Automotive America. Today, I would like to introduce Mimo Ventures, an innovation hub of automotive business group of Mitsubishi Electric. So let's get started. As you may or may not know, Mitsubishi Electric is one of Mitsubishi Group companies consisting of more than 30 spinning off companies from an original company founded by Mr. Iwasaki about 150 years ago. Mitsubishi Electric has just celebrated its 100 year anniversary and grown as a company with 38 billion US dollars revenue and more than 140,000 employees globally. Our automotive equipment business group, as known as AEG, is one of 15 business groups of Mitsubishi Electric. We are manufacturing all kinds of automotive components from electric power steering, starter, motor, generator, engine control unit, ADA systems, driver monitoring, and infotainment systems. This is our customer portfolio. We are working with almost all OEMs, not only in Japan, but globally with sales more than 6 billion US dollars. While we are ge geographically located on Silicon Valley, we have close communication with various groups of automotive business group and with other Mitsubishi electric business groups, such as corporate innovation and R&D center, factory automation and space systems. This is Mimo Ventures' objectives. We are trying to include new business by accessing internal and external talents and partnering with non-competing ecosystem partners to share the capabilities and the risks. We are also working on a program to encourage our employees with entrepreneurship to get a chance to be trained and supported working with venture builders. Now, I would like to introduce Server our leader for MIMO New Venture Program. Hi, my name is Sarvar Arman. I'm the director of New Ventures at MIMO Ventures, and it's such a pleasure to talk to you today. 
In our company, we have built an extensive new venture program to have a huge positive impact in the future of mobility and in our society. This summer, unfortunately, we all witnessed or directly impacted by ever-increased wildfires in the Northern California, rest of the US and the world. At MIMO Ventures, we already have a team consisted of internal and external entrepreneurs like yourself, working on bringing 21st century mobility tech to improve wildfire response and save a magnitude more lives and property. We have another project in space-enabled mobility to create mobility services enabled by lowered orbit constellations on Earth. Up next, we have a 5G mobility studio with a major partner to provide 5G access to our entrepreneurs and startups who would like to build mobility solutions utilizing 5G capabilities. If you're an entrepreneur that's just coming out of your previous role and interested in building new businesses in our focused domains, we would love to hear from you and potentially support you to bring those ideas to reality. You can also review one of our open roles and be a part of one of our existing great teams. Thank you so much. So thank you. Let's go back to my presentation. These are the domains currently focused, starting by logistics and smart autonomy. We are also interested in new user experience in new mobility and the services that utilize data collected from millions of connected vehicles. We believe space-enabled services will be an interesting domain where autonomous vehicles can rely on always connected high-speed network everywhere on the earth. Let me talk about our scouting process and what startup companies can expect from us. Mimo Ventures, as the innovation hub, we are understanding our customers' requirements and the problems through our business units. Based on this, we believe we can discuss with startup companies to find out right matching. The matching relationship can include POC, joint development, and a new business proposal to our business units and eventually potential customers. Direct investment, although it's in our future scope, but it's not the first priority at this moment. These are some POC examples during the last few years. As you see, there are a wide variety of activities with different business units, customers, and the regions. MIMO Venture team with four members. Shinji is leading our activity as Silicon Valley as EBP of Mitsubishi Electric Automotive America. Myself and Yuji are working on partnership side from technology and the business development standpoint, respectively. And Server is in charge of new venture program, as you know from his presentation. Thank you very much for having me here today. Please feel free to contact via email or LinkedIn. You are also very welcome to contact the other three members LinkedIn account, depending on your agenda. We have email address available to contact for venture proposals and the resumes, careers at memo.ventures. And finally, we have some open roles in EIR. Please visit our corporate career site, careers.mea-mea.com. Again, thank you and looking forward to working with you soon. Awesome. Thank you, Naoki. Up next, we have Jocelyn from NGK Sparkplex. NGK manufactures and sells Sparkplex and related products for internal combustion engines. With that, Jocelyn, please take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is Jocelyn Toll with NGK Sparkplug Venture Lab. Today, I'd like to introduce you to some of our recent activities and discuss how we'd like to engage with startups to build a better future together. To start, We'd like to share a bit about our history. NGK Sparkplug was formed in Japan in 1936. As our name suggests, we're best known for spark plugs. We're also known for automotive exhaust gas sensors. In fact, we are the number one OEM supplier of these products. While startups were our starting point, our core capabilities in the formulation and high volume manufacturing of ceramic materials has led to a variety of products in other fields. Under the NTK brand name, we produce ceramic packages for the semiconductor industry, cutting tools and piezoelectric materials, fuel cells, and oxygen supply products for the medical field. Our company is comprised of over 15,000 employees globally, and we have reached sales of over $4 billion. Simply put, 
we are a well-established company with many resources to dedicate to a future of new possibilities. So what does our future hold? We have established a Venture Lab team to be our innovation and collaboration arm of NGK Sparkplug. We are a cross-functional team of over 200 employees and are growing on a daily basis. Our mission is to keep NGK Sparkplug relevant in the midst of disruption in our core business and to do that in a way that elevates the quality of life for everyone. Our core team is located in Nagoya, Japan, and our Venture Lab teams in Silicon Valley, Tokyo, and Germany, which are the initial points of contact with our partners. We are looking to partner with entrepreneurs who share our vision and are in one of our focus areas. So what exactly are our focus areas? We are focusing our future business in the areas that we call smart health, smart mobility, and decentralized utilities. And this includes topics such as clean air and water and sustainable energy and agriculture. We've chosen these areas for their global impact and because they are adjacent to our existing businesses. The goal is to contribute to our existing materials and component expertise to collaborate with partners to create comprehensive systems and solutions. So what are some examples of projects that we are working on at the Venture Lab. Well, for one, one of our current projects is in air purification. We are applying our plasma technology to generate virus destroying ozone. What we're looking for are partners with highly accurate ozone sensing capabilities to ensure such systems can be used safely. Another example is our vehicle maintenance platform. Drawing on our presence in the automotive aftermarket, we're launching a platform to reduce friction points for car owners and repair shops alike with connected services for diagnostics and maintenance. If you're working on solutions to streamline vehicle ownership, we'd love to hear from you. Finally, another example is our evolution of sensing technology to develop water quality sensors for aquaculture. We've partnered with a startup that brings IoT and data analytics expertise to develop a water quality management system to improve yield and reduce environmental impact of land-based aquaculture. So in all, how do all these projects fit into our business portfolio? Well, our company is committed to accelerating the growth of businesses that don't rely on internal combustion engines and have it be at least 40% of our sales by 2030. Partnerships with startups like you are critical to our success in growing existing non-ICE businesses and creating new ones. So what is our strategy to make this goal achievable? One tool is, of course, investment in startups. Over the past three years, we've made investments in several companies off the balance sheet. And this month, we just announced a new CVC fund to accelerate this activity with 100 million of dedicated capital. We've partnered with Pegasus Tech Ventures to leverage their expertise in managing the fund. We are considering companies in all stages, from early to late stage. However, we are prioritizing seed and series A startups. In addition to the CVC fund, we are open to a variety of partnership structures. For example, we are contributing technical and manufacturing expertise to joint development projects. We have made complete acquisitions. We have provided office space here in the beautiful Silicon Valley Venture Lab location and we can bridge to automotive OEMs. Working with partners like Plug and Play and events like this reverse pitch, we connect with startups in our focus areas. Then we take some time to identify the intersection between the needs and the mission of the startup and our own objectives. If both sides agree there is a good alignment, then we'll define a pilot project 
or an investment through the CVC. Finally, we can help to scale the business, not only through additional investment, but also by contributing our material and sensor expertise, manufacturing capabilities, and sales channels. So really at this point, we hope that you're curious to reach out to us and learn more. So please, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can email any one of us, Craig, Ryosuke, or myself, and we'll be happy to set up a meeting with our team to discuss further about partnership opportunities between us. Lastly, check out our LinkedIn page and website to stay up to date on our projects and partnerships. Thank you so much for your time and attention, and we hope to hear from you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Up next, we have Nissan. Nissan is a global car manufacturer that sells a full line of vehicles under multiple brands. With that, we have David. Please take it away. Hi, my name is David Nishijima, and I'm a senior manager at the Alliance Innovation Lab located in Santa Clara, California, just a few minutes away from Plug and Play's main office in Sunnyvale. I lead the Connected Customer Experience team, focusing on connected services and enhancing the user experience both in and out of the vehicle. Nissan, as I hope you already know, is an automaker with global headquarters in Yokohama, Japan and North American headquarters in Franklin, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. The company was established almost 90 years ago, has more than 131,000 employees sales revenue of nearly 8 trillion Japanese yen on 4.4 million vehicles sold last year. As part of the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance, one in nine vehicles sold globally make the alliance the leading light vehicle manufacturing group in the world, consisting of 10 major vehicle brands. And this alliance, through a cross-sharing agreement, allows the partners to benefit from unique e economies of scale which in turn benefits the customer. So Nissan makes cars. A few years ago, the company promised to revamp its lineup, and it quickly has. In the US, we have eight all new models from the Sentra sedan, the Kicks crossover, the Rogue Pathfinder and Armada SUVs, the Frontier truck, to the Aria EV crossover, and of course, the rebirth of the Nissan Z. The Infiniti brand also has two new SUVs with the QX55 and QX80. So to develop all the technologies and innovations going into these vehicles, we have numerous Nissan and Alliance technical centers located around the world. Renault and Mitsubishi also have several tech centers of their own not shown on this map. So the relevant center for this talk is the Alliance Innovation Lab here in the Silicon Valley. So Nissan first came to the Silicon Valley in 2011 and has been growing its presence since then in terms of functions, scope, and capabilities. Our current office has a large garage, private outdoor area for secure testing, and ample room for hosting meetups and other industry events to support the ecosystem. We are located in the Silicon Valley to access local expertise for in-house capabilities, as well as tap into the greater ecosystem. Artificial intelligence covering computer science, data science, and human science are core competencies in the lab. With the support of plug and play and the unfortunate impact of COVID-19, our reaches have grown beyond the, the Silicon Valley. We work with both startups and other corporates to validate new ideas and then closely collaborate with Nissan product planning, engineering, design, and other relevant teams to accelerate these innovations into production. So when we consider which startups to partner with in our POCs, we look to match our ideas with the appropriate startup by first identifying the right partner for us. We do this by working with plug and play, our corporate venture team, Alliance Ventures, other VCs, and different relationships in the ecosystem based on particular topic area to understand the state of the art and adjust our expectations accordingly. We'll then screen the startup using a variety of criteria. 
So unless the topic is more futuristic in nature, such as new EV or new materials for EVs, we expect the startup to be mature enough that based on the results of the PLC, we can move quickly into production. We look at not just technology, but the uniqueness, business value, cost, timing to do both the PLC and move into production, and if the startup has already worked with another team in the Alliance. And perhaps most importantly, do we have faith in the startup to be a long-term partner with us? So in general, we're actively involved in CASE, which of course is connected, autonomous, shared, and electrification, as well as how the overall customer experience can be enhanced throughout the customer journey. So here's some keywords to consider. And a few examples of our interest areas include enhanced and safer driving experiences using intelligent human machine interfaces, uh, intelligence to understand and adopt to uncommon driving situations for both the human driver and the autonomous system, and new services that can leverage new sensors on the car and in the surrounding environment. So please reach out to me by email, phone, or your contact at Plug and Play. And depending on the innovation, I can direct you to the appropriate person at the lab if it's not me. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you so much, David. Lastly, we have Derek from Tokyo Gas. Tokyo Gas is the largest natural gas utility in Japan. They are the primary provider of natural gas to the main cities of Tokyo and other neighboring cities. With that, Derek, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the Plug and Play's reverse pitch session. I'm Derek from Akario, which is the corporate venture and open innovation arm of Tokyo Gas. Today, I'd like to share a little bit about Tokyo Gas's corporate overview, as well as how we engage with relevant startups. Tokyo Gas is Japan's largest provider of natural gas, serving the Tokyo metropolitan and surrounding Kanto regions. With a top line of 18 billion US dollars, we currently serve 11.5 million customers, of which 2.6 million are our new electricity retail customers we have attained since the deregulation of the energy markets in 2017. We have roughly 63,000 kilometers of pipeline to distribute gas to our customers and also have 2.5 gigawatts in generation capacity to serve our electric customers. Our company's business encompasses the whole LNG value chain, which begins with our upstream business procuring LNG from the US, Australia, and the Middle East. We have several midstream businesses across the globe, including Japan, Southeast Asia, as well as North and Central America. For our downstream business, in addition to gas distribution and electricity retail, we provide several services to our CNI and residential customers like house cleaning, cooking schools, and child daycare services, to name a few. Tokyo Gas announced its commitment to becoming a net zero company by 2050 in its long-term group vision called 20, Compass 2030, which was published in 2019. Since then, we have been focusing heavily on decarbonizing our operations as well as our customers. We will use technologies and expertise for the effective use of natural gas to promote decarbonization in the electricity and heat sectors, as well as for CO2 capture technologies. In addition to decarbonization and hydrogen, we are looking at various thematic areas such as new energy services, which includes demand response and resilience, renewables and DERs, microgrids, transport electrification and charging management, and our third bucket, digital transformation solutions such as customer engagement, energy management, AI machine learning enabled IT OT offerings, and automated flows and services. Tokyo Gas promotes open innovation and digitalization by collaborating with startups and large corporations in order to provide a wide range of service beyond gas. Tokyo Gas and its corporate venture and open innovation arm, Acario, work closely together to identify the needs of various business units. And through our network and sourcing activities, we identify startups to engage with for potential collaboration. We have been actively investing in startups relevant to the category shown here in the slide since 2018. And we engage with startups in a multitude of ways, including direct investments, joint ventures, and business development activities such as pilot projects and POCs. We strive to create a mutually beneficial relationship with all the startups we engage with. We don't only provide financial value, 
but also provide strategic value by enabling access to the Japanese market. Thank you all for your time today, and please don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us here listed on this slide if you're looking to collaborate with Tokyo Gas or Gario. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Derek, and great job, everyone. Thank you to all the presenters uh, today, and this will conclude the energy and mobility reverse pitch session today. I hope you all enjoyed the presentations and learned a lot from our partners. Uh, but before we jump into networking, uh, I'd like to give you a quick reminder again, we'll have our uh, IoT and uh, real estate construction reverse pitch session next week on October 6th. So uh, please make sure to register and save your spot. Uh, with that, let's jump right into networking. We'll see you guys on the floor. Mm -hmm.